could your company be making more money right now if it was doing a better job of pricing the product or service that you sell? I'm absolutely certain of that. My name is Randy Kirk. You've arrived at Small Business Daily and we are gonna be talking about pricing strategies for at least a couple of days. And yesterday, we started off by talking about the most important component of a pricing strategy, and that is what does the product cost you? So if you missed that, go back and check out yesterday's video about how you figure out your pricing and also how you negotiate or work out better pricing so that you're paying at least equal to, but hopefully far less than your competitors. And that is going to give you a lot more versatility in how you can plan pricing strategies. So today we'll get into pricing strategies 1A, okay? <laughs> so, but push the like button if this is making sense to you, that this is something you think you would like on a regular basis, then you go ahead and, and uh, subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified of future episodes, please press notify. All right. You want to price your products at the highest possible price that the market will bear most of the time. If you have a discount strategy, then that's not going to be true. You're going to want to price your pr products or your services at a level which offers a true discount, which is how you believe that you will attract the crowd is by discounting. But unless you're in a discount environment, you are always going to be wanting to sell your products and services at the highest possible price. But that's not enough in either case, whether discounting or whether selling for normal or higher prices, that isn't all you need to know. It needs to have enough margin in it for you to make a profit. Let's take a typical example. Let's use a retail store selling a $25 product. When that retail store sells a $25 product, Typically, they're going to want to have it landed on the floor at $12.50, ready to sell at $12.50. They want to make a 50% margin, which is the same as a 100% markup, which is also called Keystone. Okay, so I don't know if you knew all those things, but a 100% markup, so in other words, it costs you $12.50, you double that 100% up. You double that to $25. Or if you divide the 12 and a half by 25, it gives you 0.5, which means you have a 50% margin. That's how you determine these, these terms. Okay. So in retail, it's usually assumed that for items between four or $5 and $50 retail, there's going to be a 50% margin. If you don't make at least a 50% margin, it's likely that you are going to go out of business. <laughs> Oh no, I mean, seriously, you need a 50% margin. That 50% margin is designed to take care of your, your, your uh, building, your rent, uh, your employees, uh, your, all of your utilities and everything else that you pay every month. You're advertising to get people in the door, um, your, own, your own pay to yourself and a, and a fair return on investment. It takes 50% on a $50 item uh, in order to pay for all that overhead and give you a fair return. Okay, so that's a normal margin. Now, when you get under $5, often the margins have to be higher because you have smaller items that take more work per unit. If you get over $50, you have a $80, $100, a $500 item. Uh, most retailers are happy to work on a 45% margin or a 40% or even a 35% margin in some cases if there's not a lot of hassle in the make ready. So those margins are critical to how you run your business. Therefore, one way to price your products is to take your landed cost. We talked about that yesterday. Check out the video. You take your landed cost, ready to go, ready to resell in a retail environment. If it's under $25 cost, you double it and you get your retail and that should probably be good enough. That's probably a fine retail. Um, now, what if it's not? What if it doesn't sell at that price? Well, then the question becomes, why isn't it selling at that price? Is it because you paid too much? Again, I referred to yesterday's video, or is it because 
your competition is selling it for a lower price? Um, is it because the particular product just doesn't, isn't going to do well at that price? So now you have some choices to make in terms of lowering your selling price in order to move it through. And if you find after a while that you can't make 50% margins on an item that costs you under $25, then it may be a product that you can't afford to continue to carry. You can go back to your supplier and say, look, this thing seems to sell really well at $40, which means I need to pay 20 for it. And maybe that's a negotiation and maybe it works. And so now you have a, a good selling product. But if in general, you're not able to sell the product with a 50% margin in a retail environment, then you probably don't want that product anymore. For wholesalers, that margin is 35. So if you buy it for uh, uh, 60, $65, um, uh, then you want to be able to sell it for 100 uh, if you buy it for $6.50, you want to sell it for 10. So for wholesalers, they typically want a 35% margin in order to cover all their overhead and expenses, plus give them a fair rate of return. For manufacturers, we're back to that 50% margin. They want to be able to double. So these are the, from their, I'm sorry, they want to double to their selling, first selling level. So a manufacturer who's selling to a wholesaler is wanting to double to the wholesaler. If they're selling to an OEM, they commonly will work with far less. They'll work with, say, a 20% margin. But when they're selling to a, a wholesaler, typically they're going to want to double, again, depending on the value of the product. The higher the value of the product, the less margin that uh, companies can afford to work with. So that's one way of strategizing your pricing. You look at the cost of your materials. You look at the industry standard for that price uh, product, and then you make the decision to sell it at kind of the industry standard retail. This is also true for your services businesses. So once you've figured out the total cost of your labor, again, referring you back to yesterday's video, once you know that let's say your labor rate is $50 an hour, then you need to at least triple that. And the formula there is it's a one third for the actual cost of the labor all in, it's one third for all of the overhead, which includes uh, client acquisition and, and again, the lights and the, and the rent. Uh, and then that leaves a third, which is available for the owner's uh, personal income uh, as well as their um, uh, return on investment. So that's a third, a third, a third. That is one method for determining kind of a stock way of arriving at a reselling price for a service. Some people say that it takes four times. So if you have a $50 an hour uh, sunk cost, you need to charge $200 an hour. Um, different industries are going to differ on that. You can check with your association and you may find out that in your industry, people work on two and a half times. Maybe that's, maybe that's just what it is in that particular industry for some reason. Uh, and again, the higher it is, probably the less multiplying you need to do. So if your lawyer, uh, your, 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 your junior partner, uh, is being paid $100 an hour uh, all in, it's unlikely that you're going to charge for that junior partner at $400 an hour, maybe not even $300 an hour. So some of these things depend on also the, the, how high the price is. But those are standard systematic ways that you can arrive at pricing based on the industry standard and the way it's done in, at that level of business. Some of the tricks of the trade in, in the whole business of, uh, of uh, services right now is to use offshore help to get the job done. I certainly do that. Um, and I know many others who are doing that as well. So you can get great bookkeeping services uh, in several different countries around the world for under $6 an hour all in. So if you're paying $6 an hour for it, and that same bookkeeper would be all in at $25 an hour here, you could charge $75 an hour for that service and you're only paying $6 an hour for the actual cost of the labor. So these are that's just a, a great trick right now that happens to be true for that aspect of your pricing and costing uh, when it comes to a service-based business. So that is a foundational, fundamental method strategically to price things you can sometimes shortcut that process because the manufacturer of products 
probably puts out a price list that has the suggested retail. Uh, so now you know there is the suggested retail and you could just take them at that number and say, okay, that's the suggested retail. Let's at least put it out at that and see what happens. It's kind of a lazy strategic way to price, but it's at least a possible way to price. You might also find that there's times when you can raise the price or sometimes when you have to lower the price based on everything from seasonality uh, to circum uh, economic circumstances in a region to economic circumstances nationally to personal economic situations where you may feel that you want to move a lot of product in a hurry so you need to lower the price but when it comes to the day in and day out pricing a easy method is to use industry standards or to use the manufacturer's suggested retail uh, and that also applies to wholesale and everything else. The manufacturer generally will also have a suggested dealer price uh, for the wholesalers to use. So that's day one of strategic pricing, but there's a lot of other ways to be strategic about your pricing. And tomorrow we're gonna start talking about some of those. And some of those are mind-bendingly interesting in terms of the amount of money you could make when you employ these strategies. So this is Randy Kirk. I'm with Small Business Daily, and please press the like button, subscribe, and then ask for a notification. And put your questions down in the comments. Please ask questions, make comments about today's video. I listen, I watch them, I pay attention to them, I will answer them, and sometimes they give me great ideas for a future program. So see you tomorrow.